Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the First Baptist Church of Medford. As we like to say, there are no strangers here, only friends we have yet to meet. My name, for those that don't know me, is Pat Latham. I'm Hi, sorry. Pat. Hi. I'm sorry to announce that uh, Ruth Klein, who was scheduled to do the opening, is in Lawrence Memorial Hospital with kidney stones. There are prayer request cards available in the pews. If you would like to add a name or concern to our prayer list, please fill it out and place it in the offering plate. There is a crib and toddler room available during the service, and an usher can direct you there. After the service, all are welcome to the coffee hour downstairs in Memorial Hall. Please turn to the insert in the church bulletin for a listing of meetings and events this week. Are there any announcements to be made in the congregation? Barbara? If you haven't been here for 15 or 20 years, you might not know what it is. Um, so every year we have a craft and potluck supper on the first, usually the first Sunday of December, to start Advent. And so there's a sign-up sheet here. Um, it, it's somewhat self-explanatory. Um, it, it has a long history, and everyone is invited. If you would like to come, it'd be good if you fill out a registration form, just so we know how many people might come. If you have questions, see me afterwards, please. Thank you, Barbara. Reverend Matt? Oh, Dave? On behalf of the uh, Flower Committee, next week, we will not have flowers on the altar sheet that will be replaced with a cornucopia. All are welcome to bring fresh, fresh vegetables which we will put into the cornucopia. As in the past, we Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Medford. I'm very, very happy to welcome you here this morning. Uh, there are two announcements that I would like to call your attention to this week. First is that this coming Friday evening at 7.30, there will be a concert at the, at the church. Uh, uh, two young women will be playing cello and piano. They are really wonderfully accomplished musicians, and uh, it will be a great opportunity to hear some, some, some fantastic music and, uh, and to also continue to support the concert series, which is finally uh, coming to a close for the fall. Uh, this will be the eighth concert for the fall, and uh, uh, it's going to be a really wonderful opportunity to greet people uh, and in the church and to, uh, uh, to hear some glorious music. The second announcement I'd like to make today is that tomorrow morning, beginning at 9 a.m., there will be a breakfast honoring veterans held downstairs in Memorial Hall put on by the, uh, the Board of Mission Outreach and Social Concern. If you are available to, to come tomorrow or to lend a hand, please do so. It would be, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to say thank you. Uh, also, in, in uh, honor of Veterans Day today, during the pastoral prayer, we will have opportunity to say aloud the names of those veterans. Uh, living or deceased, which we might like to remember today. So uh, it will be a good opportunity um, to help focus our attention and our thankfulness today. Uh, one final announcement. I know I said I had two, and I threw four at you. Uh, there was a small mistake in the bulletin this week uh, related to the service from last week. Uh, the, the hymn, there, there, there will only be three hymns in the service, not four. 
and O4000 Tongues to Sing will not be sung this week. We will be singing in place of that precious Lord, take my hand. Uh, with the information is all in, in the bulletin. So we will not sing over a thousand times to sing. We will sing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. It was a special service last week before, and one of them was left. Thank you. Yes, Barbara? Um, there's a Thanksgiving service here next Sunday at 5 p.m. It's for the Medford Interfaces. <coughs> Two announcements. There will be a membership meeting today following church, and I would ask the Diagonet members to please um, join us in the Zeta Alpha room. The other announcement I have is for the next three Sundays, there will be an order form for Christmas plants. Yes, that time again. So, so I'm just giving you fair warning. They'll be in for three Sundays, and then the deadline will be December 2nd to order plans. So just so that you know, we're going to have point centers uh, as we usually do, and there will be um, a couple of additions that you can purchase as well. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Yeah.
taught us that love is the fulfilling of the law. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and pour, in, and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of love, that we may love you with our whole being and our neighbors as ourselves. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who offend us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. She said to her, All that you tell me, I will do. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life, and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. <clears throat> then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They became, they named him Obed. They, he became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Amen. The response of Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 127, found on page 573 of your Pew Bibles. We read responsibly Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that he cries up early and holy and to rest, eating the bread of anxious soil, for he is sweet to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. But arrows in the hand of the warriors are the sons of the one you. And together, happy is the man. for today is found in the Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware the scribes 
who like to walk around in long groves and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearances say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I, I would invite the children to come forward to the children's message. to get presents. <laughs> Kadisha, you don't like presents? No? Oh, okay. They teach their own. Uh, so who, who, so and most people here, who here likes to get presents? Oh, okay. Pretty good number. Uh, some who don't, I understand. You're, you're in good, good, good stead with Kadisha. So what is the best present you've ever gotten? Oh Riley, what, what's the best present you've ever gotten? Her dog, all right. Anybody else want to guess? What were to say? Emma, what was the best present you've ever gotten? Being born. That is very deep. <laughs> very good. Others? What? Yeah, oh, uh, 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 Tessa says what? My cat. Uh, Tessa says her cat is the best present. And, uh, and uh, Alana, what's the best present you've ever gotten? So another dog. It's very interesting to me that nobody said something that you can actually touch and own and put away. Everyone said a dog or a cat or themselves uh, being born. This is, uh, this is very important and, uh, and really ruins the trajectory of my children's sermon, but that's okay. <laughs> it feels good to get presents. And it feels good also to give them. We're now entering a very special time of the church year when we give back, a, well, yes, Christmas, that, that, that's coming too, but, but a, a very special time in the church year when we can give back to God a little bit of what God has given to us. And so all of the adults have pledge cards and will be making commitments to the church in the next year. And we also have pledge cards for, for the kids so that everyone can participate. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the present that you can give to God. So, uh, because God has given you so much. So this is asking for you to make a pledge to the church to, one, tell people that I love them. If you feel you can do that, then you can pledge to do that for the church. You can... Pray for our church, the minister, and its leaders. I need your prayers, and that's a great gift you could give to me. You can tell other people that God loves them. That's a very important gift. And the other thing is you can go to Sunday school. So if these pledges seem right to you, I, I invite you to make whatever pledges on these you can and to bring them next week as we all offer our pledges to God. So I have one for everybody here. And if you'd like to take one for other kids who are not here today, come see me after the service. All right? And let's hold hands and pray. Loving God, Loving God you, give you give us so very much. Us so very much. Help us 
to give back to you. Amen.
like in Jeffrey's life because when Jeffrey was born, after one to six months, he started being sick.
congregational prayer, and as we do, I call your attention to those names and concerns printed in your bulletin. Uh, among them are the Duchesne family, Betsy Burns, Kathy Chalele, Ashley and Peter Colarosi, Miles Collins, Wendy Cox, Loretta DeFava Shepherd, Agnes Dillon, Ann Felch, Philip Griffin, Kathy Harris, Barbara Heckford, Siljais Jacques, Eula Darrell and Greg Jr. Johnson, Pat Julien, Josephine Klein, Graham Long, Yevgeny Lysov, Jermaine B. Lord, Lori Pitsley, Mary Ellen Sherry, Luba Schneider, Joan Union, and Debbie Williams. And to that this morning, of course, we add Ruth Klein, who is uh, who anticipated being here today, but uh, is now in Lawrence Memorial Hospital. Are there others we would mention today or other causes for which we would give thanks? Yes, Carmel. Ah, we give thanks for Jarmel, who turned 20. And we pray everyone to come out to the Southern Road to the Ah, very good. <laughs> Others we mentioned today. Uh, oh, Barbara. Um, I'd like prayers for Diane Toby. She had kidney stones this weekend, had a bad cold, and she came to Sunday school, but she loved to go to the Minute Clinic. And um, she prays for healing. Prayers for healing for Diane Toby. Yes, Diane. I'd just like to thank everyone for their, your kind words, beautiful cards, um, the death of my father. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Continue to hold Diane Johansson in our prayers. It's good to see you here, Diane. Ellie. Um, prayer is in reference to the fires that have been happening in recent um, weeks and this past weekend. Um, I haven't had a chance to acknowledge the First Baptist Church of Wakefield um, with the destruction of their church because for many years when my uncle Earl Brooks moved to Billwork, to Billwork, to Wakefield with his family, that was his church until he passed away. And it was my cousin's church also for many reasons. And also we need to keep the people in California in our prayers because of the devastating fires. Indeed. Being mindful of all victims of fires these days. Kimberly, yes. Yeah. What's your mom's name? Doris. Doris. And also I pray for my best friend Alex, her mom. She, she just fell in this week, so she has cancer and now her, it's going to kill faster than pain or anything for her. Mm -hmm. They don't know she'll make it to the holidays. Um, prayer for my Aunt Eddie, who thought she was going in for a few weeks and ended up realizing that she had cancer. Thank you, Kimberly, for sharing those today. Many prayers. Jeremy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, nothing good than pray. Like we said, carry all to you by pray. Last Sunday, I was dying. When I tell you guys, I was dying, brothers and sisters. I was. After praying, go back home, I feel like. Just ready to go to the bus and the bus. But God said, no way. Everybody pray for you. You pray and you pray and you pray.
thanks for you, Jeremy, and yeah. the opportunity to bring you. Yeah. Riley. Pray for Riley's teacher, Ms. Gobea. Yes. Others we mentioned today. Yeah, Karen. I would like celebration for Emma for her night on Wednesday. We give thanks for Emma. Speaking <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Emma, we give thanks for you. Uh, Kimberly, yeah. Um, two more. One, um, just thank you to my husband for praying my initiation to accept it. Continue prayers for Kathy Harris and also for her husband, Frank. Others we mentioned today. Ken. I would love to celebrate the overwhelming victory of the Yes on Three this past Tuesday. And thanks and praise to all the members of the church family that helped to make that a reality. <coughs> Certainly give thanks. Yes, Frank. Uh, Greg. <laughs> I have three prayers for my mother. Prayers for uh, uh, for Greg's uh, mother and uh, for Eula, Daryl, and, uh, and others. Others we mentioned today. Yes, Tom. I just want to mention, 100 years ago today, peace broke out of all Europe. Indeed. To celebrate the end of what they call the Great War. Yes. We certainly give thanks for the emergence of peace at any time. There will be opportunity today at, at a pause in the pastoral prayer to say the names of those uh, veterans, those who have served previously, those who serve now. And I invite you in a loud voice to say those names so that we may all give thanks together. Let us pray. Almighty and most holy God, for Ruth and Naomi of years gone by, their tables were not empty because of your provision. For the widow and her son in the story of Elijah, the jar of flour did not go dry. The jug of oil did not run empty. Though years of drought might make us want and question, your rains will always come. Mindful of our own hunger and thirst, O oh God, we ask now for those blessings which will sustain us and give us our daily bread. We ask that you will send life-giving rain on the earth, that there may be bread for all nations. In your name we pray, give us our daily bread. We ask that the leaders of this country will build for peace, and not for war, so that there may be more equitable sharing of the world's resources. We pray, O oh Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We ask that this community of faith might be a sign of your loving generosity to the world, always ready to give to those who have less, always ready to welcome the stranger in our midst. We pray to you, O oh Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We ask that you will hear the cries of the hungry, and that you will open our ears to their pleas. We ask this, O oh Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Righteous God, you rule the nations. Guard the brave men and women who risk themselves in battle for their country. Give them compassion for enemies. Keep our sons and daughters from hate that hardens, or from scorekeeping with human lives. Though they must be at war, let them live for peace, as eager for agreement 
as for victory. Encourage them as they encourage one another. And never let hard duty separate them from loyalty to your dear name. Especially, O oh God, we name before you Trevor, <coughs> Bob, and Art. Kick out. Alan Brooks, Warren, Rodney. Courtney Boucher, Cheryl Baker. Matt Thomas. Marzo Austin. Name before you, O God, those with no one left to call their name, whose names are also inscribed in the plaques of this church and in countless communities throughout this nation. Loving God, giver of life, nurture us in body and spirit, so that trusting in your mercy, we may generously respond to whatever you ask of us. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, who gave his life that we may live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tibet descended on Medford.
to create a glorious work of art called a sand, a sand mandala. These monks work day and night using brightly colored sands to create a beautiful picture. Using tiny scoops and metal rods to push the sand around, these holy men worked together to make something truly spectacular. There's a picture of it in the insert to your bulletin today. Reds, blues, and greens, stunning colors, stunning details. On one side, there's a picture of the completed, uh, completed work, and on another side, a detail that shows just how intricately they made it. The monks worked slowly and prayerfully, day and night. They wore surgical masks, because the slightest stray breath, no less a sneeze, would send the dry sand flying everywhere into oblivion. These gorgeous sand mandalas are created to mark great celebrations and other auspicious occasions. They are a labor of love, a labor of time, and a labor of incredible cost. So perhaps you're asking yourself, like I was earlier, when you're done with it, how do you care for a large and delicate picture made of sand? Do you spray it with varnish to hold everything in place? Do you wet it down gently or mix into the sand some lime or something else, some kind of fastener, so that it will stay together for everyone to see for years to come? How do you protect something so beautiful and valuable? How do you guard what people have worked hard to create? The answer for these Tibetan monks is simple. You don't. You don't try to hold on to it. After the sand mandala is created, proper prayers said, and the community has had a chance to take a look at it. The sand mandala is dissolved. Piece by piece, it's swept aside, and the sands are taken to a river to return to the natural state from which they came. The beauty and blessing of the sand mandala is not something to cling to forever and ever. Its spiritual power and its value can be touched for a moment, and then you must let it go. There's an important lesson in this, I believe, for all of us. We want to hold on to what is beautiful, what is meaningful, what is valuable. We want to keep it forever. This is particularly true in the church. It is very, very hard to let go of what is precious, what others have worked so hard to make a reality. Our gospel lesson this morning is about the power of letting go of the things that we want to control. We read the familiar story of a poor widow who gave her last pennies to make a contribution to the temple. Jesus praised her. Out of her poverty, she put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Jesus lifted her up as an example because of her sacrificial giving. She let go when every natural inclination in her would have been to hold on tightly. And because of this, Jesus said that her contribution was greater than those who gave out of their security and those who gave out of their abundance. It was not the size of her gift that mattered. It was her heart. It is tempting to read this story at some face value, as a call for people of faith to give with abandon and to let go of everything all of the time. Yet who can read this story of the poor widow giving her last coins 
and not wonder about what happened when the story was over. What happened when she went home that night? Did she go to bed hungry? Was she forced to beg for her next meal? Did she ever eat again? The story of sacrificial giving is beautiful and inspiring. But there is some danger in trying to understand it as an absolute model for how we must live at every moment. I believe the story only makes sense when we understand that the temple to which she gave her last measures of devotion where it was a place that would take care of her. The temple was a center of robust, was a, was a robust social network dedicated to meeting the needs of everyone who came to it. The temple was a place of worshiping God. And from the prophets of old, all the way through the New Testament, the worship of God has gone hand in hand with generosity toward the most vulnerable members of society. The Epistle of James go far, goes so far as to say that religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to take care of the orphans and widows in their distress. That's it. The widow could let go of all she had. She could let go of her last penny because the temple to which she let it go was an institution dedicated to her care and the well-being of all its members. The temple was a place worthy of her last measure of devotion because it was a sanctuary of safety and abundance. And its generosity enabled her to let go and to give sacrificially. In the same way, the church, the church that Jesus founded and the church that still exists today, exists only for the praise of God and the well-being of God's people. God does not call us to be reckless and senseless with our giving. Rather, God calls us to let go and to create a community of sacrificial living that sustains a sanctuary of healing, generosity, and welcome for all people. We must be wise and faithful stewards of the resources God entrusts to us, making our decisions carefully. No one should ever give away their last hundred dollars when they don't know where they will make rent for the month or where the next meal will come from. No child should ever go hungry because of money put in an offering plate. In extreme times like this, it is no time to give, but rather to receive. To receive the abundant mercies of God poured out in the community of God. The blessings of abundant life in God flow like water from a stream that will never run dry. Like water, the blessings of God cannot be held with clenched fists. If you tighten your grip, the water will fall out and you will be left with nothing. But if you cup your hands, Gently, it's possible to take deep drinks. The abundance of God cannot be held fast, and it cannot be held forever. It's far too much to hold on to. It's far too much to store away. The best we can do is cup our hands together to cradle the blessings long enough to take a drink to let it run to, through our fingers, back where it came from. In the acts of giving, in the act, in the act of giving, and in the act of receiving, we are united in something that is larger 
than our small selves. Whether we give or receive, we acknowledge that we are connected to one another in the community of God. And as Christians, we must give and receive. Because when we do, we become aware that we are more tightly bound together than we can ever truly understand. It fosters a sense of interconnectedness, a sense of community and of common purpose. When we receive and give with generous hearts, we acknowledge that we are merely stewards of what God has given us collectively. Everything we have belongs to God and to God alone. God links our lives together, from the biggest of us to the smallest, from the youngest to the oldest. And each Sunday, we bless our offerings together with the same words. All things came from you, O Lord, and of your own we eat. We do not say it because it almost rhymes or because it's catchy. We say it because it's true. We all have gifts of time and skill and money. And God invites each of us to recognize the beauty of these gifts to hold on to them for the moment they are ours, and then for the sake of all that they can become, to let go. Amen. Let us walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
things come from you, O Lord, and of your own we give to you. Bless these gifts. Bless all who have given, and bless all who will receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. 